Okay, welcome to the fourth installment of the factoring series. Today we are talking, right now, we are talking about perfect square trinomials. Ding! <laughs> um, and then we're going to talk about the difference of two squares. Sorry, perfect square trinomials. I don't really even be teaching these because y'all don't be memorizing this. But anyway. Math with Miss B. Math with Miss B. There's a thousand other places that you'd rather be. But you're watching Math with Miss B. If I have AX squared plus BX plus C, and both A and C are perfect square, so the first number is a perfect square, the last number is a perfect square, and B is two times the square root of A times the square root of B, then your answer is just going to be the square root of A, X plus the square root of B, quantity squared. What does that mean? Oh, so glad you asked. I got you. Notice A and C are perfect squares. 9 is a perfect square. 64 is a perfect square. Great. Um, the square root of 9 is 3. The square root of 64 is 8. We love to see it. What is, two, what is 8 times 3? 24. What is 24 times 2? 48. Great. All I have to do is take the square roots. Boom. Boom. Three in the front because the nine was in the front. And then take the eight in the back. Eight in the back because the 64 was at the end. Or use a minus because there's a minus in the problem. That's it, y'all. Easy peasy lemon squeezy this is the best way to write your answer 3b minus 8 quantity squared most of you teachers will like it like that because we be picky math teachers you know um that's your answer so it should be super easy 10 seconds Uh, the square root of b squared is b. The square root of 64 is 8. b plus 8 quantity squared. So easy. 10 seconds, go. Oh, is that time? The square root of 4b squared is 2b. The square root of 3, I mean 9 is 3. Minus, because there was a minus in the problem, quantity squared. Wow, so easy. Okay, the difference of two squares, which is probably why you're watching this video. Um, also, the types of problems that we just learned, you can do the A equals one and the A is greater than one stuff for that problem. So if you don't want to memorize that little pattern that we just learned, don't memorize it, okay? Just do it the other way, it's fine. Um, I'm trying to see how long this difference of two square section is going to be. Slide 43, and we got to go all the way to slide. Uh, we got a long way to go, 54. Okay, it's all right, because the difference of two squares is fairly easy. Okay, so let's say you have AX squared minus C, um, and what you're going to do is if both A and C are perfect squares, so the first number is a perfect square, and the last number is a perfect square. And there is a minus in the middle, which is why it is called the difference. Because differences are subtraction. Um, you'll find the square root of A, find the square root of C, um, and then you'll just Place them in their correct positions. A is in front, C is in the back. Square roots, of course. Put a plus in one and a minus in the other. That's what's different from the last thing that we just did. Okay? Common perfect squares before we move on. Things that you should know. 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, and 100. You should know that these are perfect squares. Um, they should be easy to recognize and make your life easier. 81x squared minus 169. Of course, 169 wasn't on the list that I just gave you. <laughs> um, but you should know that the square root of 169 is 13. 
The square root of 81 is 9. Good. Um, is there a minus in the middle of those two terms? Yes. That's how you figure it out. 81 is a perfect square. 169 is a perfect square. There's only two terms in the whole problem. There's a minus in the middle. The difference of two squares. Not three, not five, not six. Just two. Notice A and C are perfect squares. What's the square root of 81? 9. What's the square root of 169? 13. Great. Put those square roots in their positions. 9x, 9x. 13 and 13. Put a plus in one and a minus in the other. That's it, y'all. Finito. You got this. Okay, 4x squared minus 1. Is 4 a perfect square? Is 1 a perfect square? Good. Notice A and C are perfect squares. Is there a minus in the middle? Yes! So that means I can proceed. Find the square root of 4. Find the square root of 1. Put them in their correct positions. That's my answer, 2x plus 1, 2x minus 1. Put a plus in one, put a minus in the other. That's it. That's it. <laughs> 10 seconds, on the clock, on your mark, get set, go! Beat the clock. Mm, time. Um, n minus 10, n plus 10. On your mark, get set, go. <laughs> Time. 11 and minus 3, 11 and plus 3. 121 is 11, 9 is 3. Put a plus in one, put a minus in the other. On your mark, get set, go. Time. M plus seven, M minus seven. Yes. <laughs> okay. Last example before we move on to doing GCFs and this. On your mark, get set, go. Time. It's prime. Oh, did I get some of you? Because there's not a minus in the middle. It's the difference of two squares, not the sum of two squares, silly goose. The difference of two squares. When it's the difference of two squares, I can factor it. When, I, when it's the sum of two squares, it's just prime. Leave that bad boy as is, okay? We have three more to go. Uh, I'm gonna do the first one with you. So let's say I have 8x squared minus 18. 8 is not a perfect square. 18 is also not a perfect square. So what do I need to do here? Well, like in any good problem, you need to look for a GCF first. Looking for a GCF will save you some time. So I'm gonna do two as my GCF on the outside and I'm gonna get 4x squared minus nine on the inside because two times four is eight and two times nine is 18. Now that I factored out my GCF, now I'm gonna factor the blue part. Is four a perfect square? Is nine a perfect square? Is there a minus in the middle? Yes, so I can use my special pattern, 2x minus three, 2x plus three. Yay, 
and don't forget your GCF here too in the front. So remember GCFs are sometimes numbers, sometimes letters, sometimes both. On your mark, get set, go! Time. So looking at the three and the 27, what do they have in common? They have a three in common, good. What about the B cubed and the B? They also have just the B in common. So 3B is my GCF. B squared minus nine is the blue part. Um, is B squared a perfect square? Yup, is nine a perfect square? Yup, is there a minus in the middle? Show sure enough. So B plus three, B minus three. Don't forget the three B in the front. You see how that goes? Okay, last one to try on your own. Make sure you get it right. Remember, GCS are sometimes letters, sometimes numbers, sometimes both. On your mark. Get ready to rumble. Go! Boop! Um. 25 and 36 have anything in common? Nah, 25 has fives. 36 has one, two, three, four, not five, but six. So that's not gonna work. What about B cubed and B? Good, we have a B in common, so that's my GCF. Is 25 a perfect square? Yes. Is 36 a perfect square? Yes. Is there a minus? Yes, so 5B minus 6, 5B plus 6 with that purple B in the front. That does it for perfect square trinomials and factoring the difference of two squares, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed today's video. I hope you take out your sheet of paper, a new sheet of paper, and go back and see if you can solve these problems without my help because I know what I'm doing. You don't know if you know what you're doing just because you stared at me. Um, and if not, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!